And while I've got you on the subject of Serie B, the Lega Football Best 11 has been revealed. We just had to add a trequartista and a striker and a winger. So let's have a look at the strikers. Determination, brute strength and the ability to beat the man at the near post to nod in the winner. That's what it takes to transcend into any best attacker of any league. No prizes for guessing who is the Lega Football striker of the season for Serie B 2021-22. It's Massimo Corda. Deservedly, he wins the award with 20 goals for the term. That's six more than all other rivals in the division. Without Corda, Lecce simply wouldn't have climbed the stairway to Serie A Paradiso. So into the Lega Football Best 11 he goes, but we still have the task of finalizing two other attacking positions. Stick with us as we sift through the Italian second tier to find out who will supply Corda in the 4-2-3-1 formation. We've posted a link in our most recent article to the Lega B top 11 as chosen by fans on Twitter. In that 11, the three-man attacking midfield consists of Gabriel Strefezza, Alessio Zerbin and Gianluca Gaetano who sit behind Massimo Coda. The criteria for the Lega Football Best 11, the candidates must have played a minimum of 25 games, that's two-thirds of the season in Serie B. 64 attackers qualified here, two of them in particular which didn't qualify were Gianluca Lapadula and Gabriel Charpentier. They fell short of the required minimum to be considered for the best 11 if they still topped their respective clubs in terms of goals for Benevento and Frosinone. We'll just have a quick look at the top scorers of each club with 12 goals at Alessandria was Corazza Dionisi for Ascoli with 9 goals, Lapadula at Benevento with 11 goals, Moreo of Brescia 9 goals there, Baldini for Cittadella with 10, Cherry at Como with 10 as well, Laravi for Cosenza, he signed in January and saved the club from going down to Lega Pro. Six goals for him, some crucial goals, especially in the playout match against Vicenza. Cremonese's top scorer, they had three. We've put Bonaiuto on this list because he had the most assists with five. Zanimacchia and Ciofani also got eight goals. Maric for Crotone with 11 goals. Charpentier for Frosinone with 10 Danny Motta did score 11 for Monza, but Gikia with the five goals in the playoffs takes him over Danny Motta. 14 goals for Gikia. Vasquez with 14 for Parma. De Luca, 10 at Perugia. Puskas for Pisa with nine goals. Cambiaghi at Pordenone. Great season for the attacking midfielder. Seven goals and four assists. Galabinov, the ex-Spezia player, nine goals at Regina. Moncozu for Spal with six goals. Donnarumma, at Ternana, that's Alfredo Donnarumma with 14 goals. And Dior for Vicenza, seven goals. The top five in the division, Corda with 20 goals. Strefezza and Vasquez with Alfredo Donnarumma, 14 goals. And Simone Corazza of Alessandria, 12 goals. We've also linked in all of Massimo Corda's goals in our Substack article on this subject. So the best attacking midfielders and wingers, it seems as though Gabriel Strafezza has been knocking about for a decade, but the dual national, the Brazilian-Italian, is only 24. Following his brilliant campaign with Lecce, contributing 14 goals from the right wing, the ex man is a certainty for this Lega football best 11. Franco Vasquez is allegedly 33 years of age. However, the 15 million euro man from Palermo to Sevilla in 2016 he sliced apart defences like a machete through a rainforest. He loves to catch a goalkeeper off his line as well. It's not just about scoring goals from deep positions for Strafezza and Vasquez. It's not just about scoring goals from deep positions for Strafezza and Vasquez. They both accumulated a handful of assists as well. Anthony Partipiro of Ternana led the division with 13 assists and Cittadella's Mitko Antenucci, that's Mitko with a K, provided seven. So here we are with our final 11. We add Corda, Vasquez and Strafezza into the mix alongside Gaetano in that front line four. Chichizola of Perugia in goal. Left back is Pietro Beruato of Pisa. Right back was Samuele Benindelli of Pisa. Federico Gatti and Andrea Cistana of Frosinone and Brescia. They are the center half pairing. Gennaro Acampara of Benevento and Morten Hulmand of Lecce are the two pivots in midfield. Gaetano from Cremonese, Vasquez of Parma, Gabriel Strafezza of Lecce with Massimo Corda up the top. So of this team, Cicizola, Gatti, Birindelli, Gaetano and Corda have all changed clubs. Only six of this 11 will remain in Serie B at this stage unless something happens in the Mercato in the meantime. 
Chichizola will rotate with Buffon at Parma. Gatti was bought by Juventus. Birindelli by Monza. Gaetano returns to parent club Napoli. And Corda has moved on to Genoa. Hulman and Strafezza will line up for Lecce in Serie A. Moving on to the Juventus, the youngsters of Serie B, the top under 23 strikers and attackers. Monza's Danny Motta was the standout kitty of the litter with 11 strikes, while Manuel De Luca and Gabriel Charpentier both ended the campaign with 10 goals each. Then there was Alessio Zerbin of Frosinone, nine goals for him, Zanimacchio of Cremenese with eight, Gaetano Cambiaghi and Tramoni of Brescia with seven. Of the under 23 players that played in the wing position, it was Zanimacchia and Gaetano who assembled five goals each to facilitate Cremonese's promotion. Meanwhile, Cambiaghi, Luca and Giuseppe Caso of Cosenza concluded with four assists. Alessio Zerbim was the most prolific under-23 winger, slotting nine goals in a debut season of Serie B that subsequently earned him an unlikely Italian national team call-up by Roberto Mancini back in June. Cambiaghi has since signed for Empoli Caso for Frosinone, Luca goes over to the Eredivisie to play with Ajax, while Gaetano and Zerbina back with parent club Napoli. Zanimacchia, who is owned by Juventus, he'll play a second consecutive season in a Cremonese jersey. So we'll present you with the Lega Football under-23 best 11 of the season. It was Carnesecchi of Cremonese in goal, Carlos Augusto at left-back of Monza, Tommaso Cassandro, he's a huge talent. He's a right back for Cittadella. Kale Bocoli of Cremonese, Elias Cobu of Parma. They are the centre-half pairing. Fagioli of Cremonese and Esposito of Spal as the double pivots. Alessio Zerbin at left wing. Dani Motta will play behind the striker. Zanimacchia at right wing. And Manuel De Luca is the striker up front from Perugio. Ten goals from him. A stunning lineup of which only Cobu and Cassandro remain in the division. The goal of the season, well, we'll leave that to Lega B Twitter and who the fans voted for. Adriano Montalto, he staved off the challenges of Vasquez Partipiro and Adrian Bernabé to claim the award after lobbing Gianluca Saro in the Crotone goal to score the winner for Regina at the Oresta Granillo on match day 22. What a goal that was. And the coach of the season awards, well, we've got a gold, silver and bronze award. Massimiliano Alvini pushed Perugia all the way to the playoffs on a shoestring budget, getting the best out of Cicizola and a youthful defense piloted by relatively unknown Filippo Sgarbi. And of course, those 10 goals squeezed out of Mamo De Luca. Alvini has since taken the Cremonese job. He's awarded the bronze medal. Let's see how he molds Le Tigre in 2022-23. At this point, I must make a special mention of Ivan Javocic, who shattered European records to elevate FC Sutirol from Lega Pro to Serie B for the first time in the club's history. He's a former Brescia midfielder, a former teammate of Roberto Baggio. He's subsequently taken the Venezia position for this season. And if you'd like to go back, we have interviewed Javucic a few weeks back, and you can check that out on the Lega Football platforms. Silver medal. That goes to Fabio Pecchia, who decided to vacate that Cremonese bench after clinching second place and commanding a youthful Grigio Rossi outfit back up to Serie A for the first time since 1996. Pecchia achieved this by getting the best out of the entire squad, harnessing the talents of under-23 giocatori like Gaetano Fagioli, Zanimacchia, Ocoli and Carnesecchi instead of simply relying on veterans like Di Carmine and Ciofani to survive relegation. Let's see if Pecchia can do the same at Parma this season. The gold medal. Well, Giovanni Stroppa is Italian football's adaptation of Die Another Day. The former Crotone boss of 2021 is back to lead another side into the Italian top flight for the second time in three years. On the back of missing out on automatic promotion, Stroppa still rose above the expectations imposed on him, not just by the media, but also the likes of Adriano Galliani and Silvio Berlusconi to win the Serie B playoff final against Pisa back in May after galvanizing his squad and getting the best out of them. He is the Serie B best 11 coach of the season bolstered by prestigious signings like Caprari, Sensi, Pessina and Cragno Monza contesting its debut season in Serie A with Stropper at the helm that is our coverage of the Serie B best 11 series we hope you enjoyed that one we've also got other articles out there about the best goalkeepers best defenders best midfielders and of course the guide to Serie B promotion for those of you who want to understand a little bit more about the Italian second tier 
And just before we wrap up this episode, the first week of Serie A for the season, I've been reading all the articles, listening to some podcasts as well. Great work from all the club podcasters out there. I've also been reading some articles aside from Emmett Gates. Nicky Vandini wrote a Serie A write-up in The Guardian, which made me chuckle a little bit, talking about how Juve and Inter have been pulling out the Tupperware containers of frozen soup from the freezer using old recipes like bringing back Lukaku and Pogba to try and prize back that title from Milan instead of trying a different recipe with different players. The old reheated soup, the Minestre Riscaldate, some of you will know it never tastes as good as you hope. Bandini went on to write, so Roma, Lazio, well, they've made some quality tweaks, but the antithesis to that would be Napoli. ADL has torn up Nonna's traditional recipe and has thrown out a couple of the ingredients that we're all used to. The Neapolitan Minestra of 2022-23 hasn't even started simmering yet. It's a very new recipe. We'll see how that goes on Monday away at Verona. Just on that note, we do have a Lega Football player card series. We started off with Cremonese's Desotti. This week, it's Hans-Peter Briegel for Verona, who played there and debuted in 1984. They won that title in 1984-85. His goal was the club's first for the season, the wonderfully angled header from a corner coming in from the right. Briegel used the pace of the ball to steer that in onwards into the far corner. It was also the debut of Diego Maradona in Serie A for Napoli. So you can check out that player card. It's on our Twitter feed. There's also a great article we've reposted from Mark Doyle of gold.com. That's titled, Serie A has become the Serie B of Europe. So some interesting points that Mark has touched on does go back to the chat that we had with Adriano Del Monte. That kind of tags on to what current Monza sporting director and former Milan sporting director Adriano Galliani said about Italy's future to build new stadiums. And this is a statement from Paolo Scaroni, the current AC Milan chairman, as Mark Doyle wrote in his article on goal. And I quote, We can take the best opera singers in the world, but if we make them sing in a shed instead of at La Scala, that's a big difference. So we'll link that one in on our Twitter feed as well. The Serie A rewind of the week was that goal from Igor Protti for Bari against Napoli. Napoli seemed to be on the receiving end in this episode, but uh, Patanape supporters just know that we love Napoli and uh, wish them all the best against Verona. We are just 24 hours away from the launch of 2022-23 Serie A. Thanks for sitting in on the chat with Emmett Gates. We'll probably get to a new section next week, the Tribuna, the grandstand where fans can complain. We'll see what arises online as teams win, draw and lose over the weekend. Some will overperform, some will underperform. Good luck to your team, no matter who it is, especially to those three newly promoted sides and also the four newly promoted sides in Serie B. I'm your host, David Farini. Ci sentiamo. This is Lego Football.